What if I told you that eBay are doing something without you knowing that's having a negative impact on your store? In today's video, I'm gonna tell you what it is, why they're doing it, and what you can do to stop it from happening to your eBay business. All right, so this all came about a couple of days ago in my own eBay store. I said to Courtney, my part-time employee, to just go through all of these shoes and just reduce the price ever so slightly. As she was doing this, she realized that there are a number of shoes that are no longer available for purchase on my eBay store. And I know that I definitely listed these items up. And I realized that eBay actually does this. If you've got a listing that's dormant, untouched, unmaintained, eBay will go ahead and just kill it off. They'll remove it from the platform and they won't let you know about it. And that's a real concern because I've got limited inventory space here at the house and I need every single item that's here to be available for purchase. And if I'm not aware that these shoes aren't available for purchase, it's gonna cause me issues down the line because I'm just gonna sit around in this garage forever gathering dust and here I am thinking that just nobody wants to buy them. Now, fortunately, there is a pretty easy solution to make sure this doesn't happen to your eBay business. And that's basically putting a management plan in place for your active listings. And there's really ultimately four main reasons why these listings have become dormant on my store. And the first thing is the title. I was just making bad titles three years ago when I very first started. The next one is photos. I was just making terrible photos. I didn't have these really nice box lights. I just had horrible sunlight shots with a lot of shading. And and that was the reason why they weren't attractive for purchase. The next one as well, number three, is my price points were just incorrect. I was trying to sell a dud product for a really expensive price and just nobody wanted it. I was pricing my, myself out of the opportunity to sell the item. And then number four is the actual product quality itself. Either it was just an unattractive product that didn't have very good sell through rate or it was just in really poor condition. And I just bought it anyway, hoping that anything would sell on eBay. So that are the four reasons why these listings ultimately go dormant. And if you don't have a management plan in place to go back, really realize there's an issue there and actually look to attend to it, eBay's just gonna go ahead and kill it off. And to be honest with you guys, after three years of doing this, I probably should have pulled my finger out and attended to my old stock because I'm on limited real estate in this garage and I need to be making sure everything, every single one of my listings is dialed in, but I just got so focused on what was coming up, what new listings am I putting in, and I was neglecting the old stuff. I can tell you right now that if you do that little step of fixing up those four elements that I spoke about, uh, you're actually gonna get these old items sold. It's gonna put more cash in your pocket and you'll be able to go again and use the knowledge of what you do need to buy and get those really good items with good sell-through rates that will generate even more money for your business. So now that you're aware of this, what do you think? Should eBay be letting us know that these listings are now no longer on the platform for us to be able to do something about it? I kind of think so, but it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on whether or not you've experienced this problem as well with hidden eBay listings. Fortunately though, guys, I've got a number of listings that are available for purchase and we had seven sales that came through overnight. So I'm gonna take you through six of those sales right now and then we're gonna get off to the post office and go and do some thrifting. So the first two sales have sold in just a matter of days. What I'm referring to here is a couple of Pokemon games on the Game Boy Advance. The first one that I've got for you is Pokemon Sapphire. That one there sold for $109 and then Pokemon Leaf Green. We actually got $189 for that one there. I sold Pokemon Emerald earlier this week on Tuesday. That was the third and final game that I had. These are actually my old games from my personal collection back when I was a kid. So to see these turn around for collectively $500 this week, uh, has been just crazy to see. The sell-through rate is just madness, and I'd be paying up if I saw these games at flea markets, garage sales, thrift stores, uh, because you know you're gonna get a very high average sale price, and they're gonna sell super fast. This was the next one, Great British Ghosts. Just a season one copy, but we're able to get a $20 sale price on this one, and also $20 worth of international postage. It's off to the USA, so DVDs like this, you can easily find in thrift stores. I just paid a dollar for it, and we ended up getting a $40 revenue, which was pretty crazy to see. Now, say you're just starting out and you're looking for a category to try and get into, I think this one right here is a good one. Retro gaming. If you can find the old consoles like this, the Super Nintendo, they can go up for some pretty good money. Um, this one came with all of its cables. It's got a controller along with it as well. Uh, tested and working, $135 plus $35 worth of international postage. I think this one's off to Canada. Um, but if you find all of the games like I've got for all the different consoles and you buy a few consoles as well, it's a good one to test the games out uh, if you need to. Uh, otherwise, they go on to sell for some great money as well. Another DVD sale as well, guys, All Saints, 2003 season, episodes one through to 43 only for this one here. We've got a 47.45 sale price. So there's some fantastic money in that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a large tracked envelope. I think they're about six or $7 to purchase, um, but I always do that for DVDs of multiples of two. Um, so that should get off there pretty safely. A big, big TV show. If you can find seasons of this, you'll do very well.
Hey Michelle, you're in the vlog. You're on YouTube. Hey. Hello everyone. So this is Michelle, everybody. This is Michelle, the best post office lady oh. on earth. Oh, that's a very nice thing to say. Hello everybody. Michelle and I, I've been dropping posts off to you for three years. I know. And this I is the first time. Longer. This is the first time you've been in the vlog though. Oh, well, I'm happy to be in it. Well, if there's going to be Anything to do with you, darling, I'm happy. You're a legend. See you guys. Have a good weekend. You See you later. Michelle, nicest lady. It's been a minute, Courtney's I've been, back. I've been in there for like two weeks. <laughs> Courtney's kind of been trapped, yeah. So she's out for an hour. We've only got an hour though. Yeah. You're in. What do you want to say? I mean, yeah. You can say you can say anything you want. I just started selling on Depop. Oh, really? Oh, What's your name? My name is Heath. Heath. I've met you before. Yeah, when did we meet? Lifeline, my mermaid, I think. Oh, nice. I think it's KFC. Oh, well, see. I don't know if it's a Lifeline. I forget what it is. Yeah, right. But yeah. I How's just, Depop going? It's good. I've been on it for like four days, yeah. and I made like. $250. What? Sick. Courtney's, Courtney's on Depop as well. I'm just well. doing like my stuff. I'm not like thrifting for it, I guess. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I should probably be doing yeah. that. So you're only doing clothing? Yeah, mainly. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's, um, let's get in there. I'll avoid the clothing then for you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you but don't, don't touch the DVDs. <laughs> Four dollars. Are they real? Are they real? Are they cameras? Oh, right. I added us. Pure Boost. A four dollars. I think you have some in the stock tank pile still. Don't say that. <laughs> you, you're right though. <laughs> yeah, we'll add them to mix. What about those Nikes? You see them? <laughs> Look at those. How awesome! Sorry. They're tiny. How size? Four and a half. Oh, they are small. No. Oh, executive decision. <laughs> I've just seen a lot of shoes lately. Straight away, she's. She said no. These are a size eight. Women's. Yep. Yeah. But they're four bucks. Mm. You're, you're stressing. Why are you stressing? I haven't been out of the house in two weeks. Yeah, you've been trapped. <laughs> We've trapped you inside listing. Um, oh, no, look at these. So, all of these we want. Simpsons, what? One, two. There's a season 20 in there, which is rare. Hold those. We'll put them on the. On the um, do you want to just do a bit of a quality test? Well, what have we got? 10. This is falling apart. Are we in there? Yeah. What well, the disc look like? Pretty good. Yeah. What season is that? Eight. Eight. In there? Missing a disc. Missing a disc. Missing, missing. missing a disc. Yeah. Oh. But it's all so scratched. Scratched. Look at that. Damn. So we determined that these six seasons are unfortunately no good. They were just too scratched up. Um, but Courtney, what have you got there? What seasons? Um, tenth and fourth. Four. four and ten? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got four and ten, which is cool. And they're only five dollars each. Um, and they're all in there? Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised. Sometimes they're not. Oh. That one's in there. Raymond Origins. Oh, can we do... Can we do those three and I'll leave that one? These three? Yeah. Alright, now that, that was a bit of a test because obviously the lady at the front counter, I wasn't going to start pulling up comp research right in front of her. So I've just gone ahead and I've picked these three random games, but I have no idea what the value of them is. We'll jump in the car, we'll do some research, and we'll just see whether or not they were a good buy or not. Alright, so the first one is Scooby-Doo First Frights. That, that, 30 bucks, surely. First? First Frights. Oh, not good, not good. Oh no. They're all $12. Oh, 12 bucks. It's like scratchies. This is like scratchies. <laughs> We've lost money there. Raymond Origins. Raymond. Easily $30. Raymond Origins. How much do you reckon it is? 20. 20? That'd be nice. What do you got? 15 to 18. Also, there's one that went for 18. 17.50. And then keep scrolling. 10. That was a 20. Yep. Oh, yep. okay. So that one, I'm going to say that's profitable. This one I had absolutely no idea on. The trash pack. Gross gang in your garbage. Five dollars. 
Fifty dollars. Give us something good. Oh. oh no. No, don't say that. Oh, it's a ten dollar. <laughs> oh. oh no. Nah, still better than nothing. Uh, it's we've just lost money, Courtney. I know. We paid fifteen and we've made twelve. That's really good. <laughs> So it wasn't the best thrift run in the world. We only had those two DVDs and a pair of shoes in the end. Courtney is now back downstairs listing away. I did want to take you guys through my sales figures though um, for the last couple of days. We've had a real drop off in, in overall sales and really we haven't changed our game plan. We've still been doing the same thing as always, 15 listings going live every single day. But you'll see here we've had $137 day, 140 114 and 123 Now, to put that those numbers into context, I normally do three to $400 in daily sales. That's almost a 50% fall in average daily sales, yet we haven't done anything different on our end. So that's really scary because usually you can trust what you put in is what it will return for you. Um, but I haven't seen that over the last well, best part of two weeks. Uh, and really that's for the first time ever. So a little bit scary, but then over the last three days, we did $615, then we did $819 yesterday out of nowhere. And then we've done a $320 day so far today that could very well turn into a $500 day. So it's kind of leveling itself back out with a couple of big bopping days, which we don't normally see. So it's erratic. It is all over the place at the moment. And um, I'm kind of fortunate that these listings that we've uncovered no longer being listed. It's kind of like a blessing in disguise because now we've got free listings that we haven't had to pay for that we can now put into eBay for the next few days and continue on with this stock take just to see how many listings are actually not active. Uh, and we can put them up for free, technically. We won't have to pay cash, which is fantastic considering we've had a bit of a run of slow sales. So hopefully all of that is useful information, guys. I don't know. We're just doing a seven-part video series this week and I'm just plucking anything I can out of the air to try and help you guys with your own eBay business. So drop a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn a thing or two about how to sell on eBay. And I'm going to leave you with this video right here, which was episode three of our week-long vlog. Appreciate you being here for this. Let me know if this is the fourth in a row for you guys. If you're tuning in all the way through, I do appreciate it. We'll see you soon.